Let's make some maple syrup. I have a buddy that wanted to try making maple syrup. He has the maple trees, a great place to locate the evaporator, and a supply of firewood. It'll be fun, he said, so I tagged along to help out and to document the process. All of this takes place at his hunting camp. We are in year two of making syrup. It's an evolving work in progress. Step one, we need some sap. In order to get sap, you need to tap some maple trees. How many, I guess, will depend on your capacity to process the sap. To tap the tree, you drill a hole two and a half to three inches deep at a slight uphill angle and preferably aligned with a root below or a branch above. This should leave a void beyond the end of the tap where sap can gather and make its way into the tap. The diameter of the hole will depend on the style of tap you have. These are two common tap styles we've used so far. You then need to gather the sap. In year one, we only used one gallon plastic jugs. In year two, we're still using plastic jugs and have added a few sap buckets. We've tapped about 30 trees in close proximity to the woodshed where the evaporator is located. Under the right combination of night and daytime temperatures, the sap will run. You've probably heard at some point that 40 gallons of sap will yield one gallon of syrup. The sap has the look and consistency of water. Well, duh, remember 40 to 1? It's about 97.5% water. We empty the individual jugs and pails into 5 gallon containers. On a good day, we'll gather 25 to 30 gallons of sap. Step two, you need an evaporator. The evaporator is used to remove the water. It's kind of like making a duck decoy. You start with a block of wood and take away everything that doesn't look like a duck. So for our syrup, we'll start with a bunch of sap and take away everything that doesn't look like syrup. The evaporator assembly started with a stainless steel pan. The pan is roughly two feet wide by three feet long by four inches deep. An outlet with a stainless ball valve was added to the pan. On the ground underneath is a steel plate. New for season two is a grate created from some steel channel and angle iron. The evaporator is supported by concrete blocks and equipped with a stovepipe outlet from the firebox, a damper, and a chimney. In season one, the front of the firebox was partially blocked off, leaving the rest open for access to stoke the fire. In season two, the front of the firebox was enclosed with chunks of stainless and a block with a larger core turned on edge for a more controlled draw of combustion air and better control of the fire. Better fire control has allowed a much more even and consistent boil across the surface of the pan. The most efficient evaporation happens when we can maintain a controlled fire, a consistent volume of sap in the pan, and minimize the fluctuation of temperature. We have a system to add preheated sap to the evaporator, hopefully at the same rate that water is evaporated. The two pan system consists of one pan with a valve that can drip sap into the evaporator pan. and another pan where sap is preheated and used to replenish the dripper pan.
larger commercial operations use a reverse osmosis machine to remove up to 75% of the water from the sap, substantially reducing the time in the evaporator. For a small budget hobby operation, we don't have that luxury. All of the water removal has to take place in the evaporator. Our high-tech depth gauge for maintaining volume is this ladle. The depth is checked periodically and the valve on the dripper is adjusted accordingly. Once all the remaining sap has been added into the evaporator, we keep a close eye on the level. Step 3 is to filter, finish, and bottle. There's a fine line between having syrup or having burnt caramel on the bottom of the evaporator. As a result, when the volume is getting down there, we raise the evaporator off the fire and draw the near syrup out and filter it in the process. For filtering, we use this heavy felt-like material that is a standard in the maple syrup industry. In season one, we learned the hard way not to draw the syrup off with the evaporator still on the fire. Out there. That's it. We finish the syrup in a frying pan on a camp stove. The frying pan acts as a tiny evaporator, but is much easier to remove from the heat.
When the syrup gets this frothy boil across the entire surface of the pan, we know we're close to that fine line and it's time to bottle it. The reality is, in a seven or eight hour day, we can process 25 to 30 gallons of sap and end up with about three quarts of syrup. Cost effective? Maybe not, but the end product is delicious. On pancakes or on a waffle, hot out of the waffle iron while we're still at camp. Come on, you know that looks good. Not bad for a couple of rednecks. Thanks for watching.